Oh, the dreams we wove, Jed and I, of a better life on that free land. But I should have known, nothing is free. Come on, Jasper. Jed had his work to keep him busy. But I was left alone, with only the memories of my two girls. prayed for them, and though they were gone, I could not let them go. It had happened only that spring, and I had been cold ever since. prayed for understanding, but it seemed the Lord had stopped listening. My heart had not yet healed when the boy came. You think you can keep old Bud from running off? I'll leave you to it. All right. Hey, I thought I recognized that buggy. How are you, Pastor Clay? Nice to see you. What a surprise. Good to see you, Jed. Thank you. Martha, how are you? I'm managing just fine. Good. I want you to meet someone. This is Daniel. Daniel Maris. Daniel's mama died on the trek. His papa passed away last week. I need to find him a good home, and I thought that you'd care for him. Uh, Daniel, this is Jed and Martha Richards. Can't you say hello, son? Hello there, young man. That's a mighty fancy hat you got there, huh? What would you rather be called, Danny or Daniel? Daniel's the name I get schooled in by. When I'm good, I'm Danny. <laughs> uh, William, don't you worry about anything. I think we can make a, a good home here for the boy, don't you think, Martha? Martha? 
Martha, I think Danny wants you to have this flower. Thank you, Daniel. So what do you think, Martha? You think we can give the boy here a good home? <laughs> Maybe she's not ready for this yet. You can bring the boy back to me if need be. You understand what I'm saying? I understand that you brought me a fine son, William. And I'm obliged to you. truly grateful for the many gifts that thou has bestowed upon us today. Just good food, the company of a friend, or well, most of all, the addition of a new member to our family. Bless this food to our body's use and us to thy service. Amen. Amen. Let's eat. Slow down. This isn't a race. You may have all you like. His pa's cooking probably wasn't much good. He's probably starved for the taste of a woman's cooking. <gasps> oh! Now look what you've done. The next time you want some more Johnny Cake, just ask someone to please pass you the Johnny Cake. Oh, man, Martha. No real harm done there. You know, there's no need in crying over you know what. The boy's just hungry. It's time to adjust. There'll be, there'll be plenty of time for learning manners later on. I always did like my Johnny cake soaked in milk. It's delicious. Hey, would anybody uh, like some honey for the cake? Food's delicious tonight. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Martha. Now, don't you worry about me anymore. I'll just bed down in the wagon for the night. We need to make some arrangements about your sleeping. I want to go with you. Well, I guess sleeping under the stars for one more night won't do any harm, if it's all right with you, Jed. Well, I see no harm in it, but you sure you don't want to stay in here with us? Now, if you men need anything, you just give me a holler, okay? Much right. surprise. Good night. Good night. At the time, I could not see his pain. He had lost everyone he loved. 
He was much more alone than I was. All I could see was that for Jed to have so readily accepted the boy appeared a betrayal to me and to my little girls. I'll, I'll be stopping by the Tanner place on the way back to see how they're doing. Well, please give my regards. I'll do that. Good luck to you here, Jed. Thank you very much. Daniel, you mind your manners now. Ma'am. Pastor Clay. Let's go. Come on. Bye-bye. that you were going to stay here? Don't you want me to be your pa? Well, then what are you in such a big old fired hurry to get out of here for? Hey. Sit down a second. I want to talk to you. Listen. I want you to try to understand something about Aunt Martha, okay? I mean, she may seem just a little bit rough around the edges right now, but deep down inside of her, she's got one fine heart. And that heart's still grieving the loss of our two little girls. So your two little girls are in the same place as my mama and papa? Yeah. She doesn't like me. No, it's not that she doesn't like you. It's just that... Well, people change. You might say that... People can go through through different seasons in their lives. <laughs> when I first met Martha, she was like she was like a warm summer day. It was nice to just even be be near her. But when we lost the two girls, she lost some of that fire inside of her. She's kind of going through. Uh, she's going through winter now. Well, the sun's gonna shine on us again. And springtime's gonna come again for Martha. When's that gonna happen? I don't know. I really don't know. But I know that when, when Sarah and Lucy died, that, that it left a real icy spot in my heart. And since you've come here, you know, my heart doesn't feel so cold anymore. So I'm glad that you've come to stay with us. But would you just give Martha another chance? And if she doesn't come around, we'll both spill milk on her, okay? So Daniel came to stay with us as we attempted to settle this desolate valley. I had to admit, the boy was a big help to Jed, in spite of his young age. Hey, take her easy now, Danny. Okay, help! 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 Good job! All right, good work, buddy. There. You're not going anywhere near this nice, clean bed looking like this. You have got plenty of washing up to do. <laughs> Don't go looking at me. Do what she said. Good bath ain't never hurt anybody. I tell him when he had his last one.
That should make it nice and warm. Get in. Do you need some help? Suit yourself. Let me know when you're in. So, hon, how was your day today? Fine. Just fine. We had more eggs today than we have in the last three weeks. Daniel, are you in yet? Yes, ma'am. Daniel! <laughs> now, that's rather a clever piece of thinking right there, hon. Boy's taking a bath and washing his clothes at the same time. I mean, think all the time he's gonna save hauling water back from the well. Daniel. Are you trying to smart aleck me? What's wrong? No, get back in! Come on. Don't give the boy such a hard time here. I mean, he ain't trying to smart aleck you or anything there. I think he's just embarrassed about taking a bath with a woman in the room. I mean, he probably don't even recollect how to take a proper bath. You know, it's been a while since he's had a mom. Maybe. Don't fret with me, boy. I'll take care of it. Okay, son, get them clothes off. Come on up. Take this stuff. I'm gonna clean you up so good you won't even know what's going on. Where'd you get them big muscles? Don't forget his ears. Uh, Arthur, where do you think I'm gonna leave him? Uh, Boy, well, he does turn into a smart aleck. I'll know where he got his learning. You got some spots on this face that I don't think are gonna ever wash off. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are freckles on this boy's face here. <laughs> Rub dub dub, bugs in the tub. Did I eat good, Aunt Martha? Yes, you did. Very good. You did very good. Now you can eat the hay. Well, Jed, on your way back in, will you fetch me some water for tomorrow morning? But do why I didn't think of that. <laughs> Thank you for the bed out, Martha. You're welcome. Don't you think I'd best be saying my prayers long about now? I suppose now would be a good time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's hallowed mean? Being wonderful. Oh, that makes sense. Help me mind my manners like a good boy would. Take care of my mama and my pa, and my new pa and Aunt Martha, and Aunt Martha's two little girls. Amen. <laughs> Aunt Martha, have you ever seen God? I suppose she, she has.
No illness extinguished the flame of human life as swiftly as cholera. The death illness, we called it, for it left few survivors. Sarah and Lucy took sick in the afternoon, just after running to me with some wildflowers they'd found. By the next morning, their sufferings had ceased. The hardest thing I ever had to do was leave them there. Food for the wolves that forever shadowed the wagon train. Sounds like you know who. Oh, hold on to you, your son. <laughs> it is. Oh, I'm in prepared, Jed. The cabin needs cleaning up. Look at all these dishes. Who's that, Pa? Well, that's the Tanners, son. They're the closest thing we have to neighbors. Looks like they have a boy. Is he my age? Sort of. Well, isn't that a lucky deal? Now I have somebody to play with. Daniel C. needs 10 to 2. Two. Hello, Eleanor. What an unexpected visit. It's so good to see you. It's good oh. to see you, too. <laughs> oh, you have no idea how lonely I've been. How much I've missed the company of another sweet woman. <laughs> Eva, stop lollygagging around up there in that wagon and get down here and say how do to our neighbors. Here, pass me that angel. Oh. oh. Hello, Martha. Hello, Jay. Hi, ah, Heber. How are you? Oh, aren't you glad the cool weather's here? Oh, Martha, it's been a long time since you've seen Pauline. Hasn't she grown? Isn't she perfect? And she's the sweetest baby that ever was. Oh, next to Nate, of course. Oh, and this must be Danny. Oh, Pastor Clay told us all about how he brought you here. Oh, that's why we came. We wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood, so to speak. <laughs> Oh, Eva, get that parcel out of the wagon. Oh, what a fine-looking young man you are. Isn't he fine, Eva? He's fine. What a blessing you must be to the Richards. I brought you some clothes that Nate has outgrown. I thought you might be needing them for Danny here. Oh, we also brought you some bacon. Ma! Ma! Oh, I'm sorry, son. I almost forgot in all this excitement. Danny, climb up into the wagon. Nate has something he wants to give you. Eber, help Danny up in the wagon. A pig, my very own pig. Ain't he something? Him and you'll be my best friend. Does he have a name? He's just like a little bear cub, ain't he? Bear. That's what I'll call him, Nate. I'll call him Bear. What do you think? Bear. Oh, I'm awful sorry, Martha. That was the bacon I was telling you about. That? Well, it's still quite fresh, as you can see. <laughs> thank you, Aunt Martha. I promise I won't let Bear be a bother to you. Don't thank me. I didn't give it to you. Thank the Tanners. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome, son. Oh, giving gifts brings much pleasure to a boy such as Nate. <laughs> Even if it isn't the gift he intended. <laughs> oh, my. My, that's a dusty road, isn't it? Martha? Oh, yes, it is. Why don't you come in for a rest, Eleanor? Oh, thanks. I don't mind if I do. Nate, come and talk this parcel on up to the cabin for me. Oh, there they go, off to hide in the barn. <laughs> well, it's just as well, I suppose. You can hardly get a word in edgewise with men around. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Martha, there's dirty dishes. Did we interrupt your meal? I'm terribly sorry. I had just finished. Oh, what did you have? Oh, oh, look. Oh, boy, put the parcel up on the table. <laughs> oh, go ahead, open it up, see what you can use. Daniel, get that pig outside. Yes, ma'am. Well, you may need to do a little bit of hemming, but it's just a sweater and some pants. And... Good pig. Good bag. Oh, what a luxury this must be. Having your own looking glass and being able to look at yourself in the mirror every day. Why, oh, I'd almost forgotten what I looked like. Oh, look at the crookedy way I parted my hair. It's a pity it's cracked. It is? No, I mean the glass. Oh. It happened on our way out here. Oh, yes, of course. Well, it's a wonder anything so fragile survived a journey like that, even this well. Oh. Here, Martha, take hold of Pauline so I can get a better look at myself in the mirror. I was just going to fix us something to drink. Oh. It's a shame how living out here just takes the prettiness right out of a woman. Oh, makes her all dried up and, and tough like a piece of old jerky. Oh, but then if you stayed soft and pretty with delicate feelings, oh, you probably wouldn't last long. How old are you, Martha? Oh, never mind, I can judge for myself. I was 37 when I gave birth to Pauline, and I'm guessing you're younger than I am. Surely you have time for one or two more. Heavens, Eleanor. You know, I hear tell that when an Indian woman wants a little papoose, she unbraids her hair and lets it hang long and loose on her shoulders. Bill. Hey, that's real good, Nate. Wait till I show Aunt Martha. Aunt Martha, look. It's bare. Daniel! What do you mean, marring my Bible like this? I can't keep my eyes on you all the time. I have to be able to trust you not to do something like this when my back is turned. Come on, mate. Boys. Oh, Martha, Danny didn't draw this picture. Nate did. Oh, the boy is starved for something to draw on. I let him draw on the inside cover of all our books because there's nothing else to use. Well, now he thinks that's what this inside cover is for. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. He should have said something. Just let me carry on. But he was protecting my Nathan. It's a good boy you've got there, Martha. Come on, Nate, come on! Go, Bill. Go! Oh. <laughs> Down. Good. Daddy, um, I'm sorry. I am bad boy. No, you're not. It's okay. I don't know why she got so upset. She never reads that old Bible anyways. If I had a book, I'd let you draw on it for sure. My real mama and papa had lots of books. Do you want to see something that belonged to my real mama and papa? I ain't showed no one these things before. This here's a lucky penny my pa gave me. I'm never supposed to spend it. Wanna hold it? You're rich. This here is a curl from my mama's hair. Feel how soft it is. It's uh... Now you promise never to tell nobody what's in this box. Promise? Do you really promise? Promise. Look, Nate, there's a big old garter snake. Don't worry, he probably won't hurt us. I'll throw a clod at him and scare him away. What are you doing? Are you afraid of it? You caught him, Nate! You caught him! Let me see him. He kind of looks like Aunt Martha. That's it. Mm -mm. 
Touch it. Why'd you let him go? You're smart, Nate. I'm a smart boy. Spy. Too harsh, I saw. I'll never get it. Keep trying. Wait till I show pie. Come on, Bear. Come on. Come on. Sure has been nice visiting you folks, hasn't it, Eva? Nice visit. Well, you know, you're always welcome here. Bye bye. Come on, boy. Ho! Oh, bye. Oh, dear me, I almost forgot. Told your horses, Eva. Whoa. There's to be a sociable in town. First Saturday of next month, I was to pass the word along. We'll be seeing you there, I hope. Well, yeah, I, I... We won't be able to make it. But, Martha, <laughs> it'll be our last chance to socialize before winter sets in. Bunny, you're my best friend. Oh, dear, talk some sense to us. What's on? Bye. Now, why do you go taking off like that when I'm so What's the matter, Bear? <laughs> Don't you want me to be your pa? <laughs> they wouldn't argue with you. Oh, no, it was all my fault. You should have let me drive. You should have let me get in and drive my way. I always do. Oh, we friends. I don't know what to do about you. He won't cause you any trouble at all, I promise. No, absolutely not. He will not be having his little pig dreams in this cabin. Bye, Bear. I hope I see you in the morning. I hope the wolves don't get you. Sure hate to picture that. of you and compared to me a wolf is gonna look like your best friend come on bear <laughs> starting tomorrow that pig sleeps outside <laughs> stampede <and> buffalo <laughs> Oh, you fix it. You Jed, broke it. Fix it. You made it. You broke it. You did it. Chad, fix it. Danny, you fix the bed. Chad. <laughs> Do you find? 
behind there, boy. She'll be glad to see her pretty bird in heaven. Though my heart was locked tightly around the memory of my little girls, at times I felt ashamed that I could deny love to a child, any child. And I made up my mind to try harder. I suppose the boy's education's been neglected long enough. Yes, I would say so. I'll commence teaching him myself. There's a primer I can use in the trunk. Nobody can say I didn't try to educate the boy. Daniel! All right, Martha. Yes, indeed. Daniel! Yes, indeed. Then the winter snows blanketed the earth, and the grasshopper could find no more food. Starving, he went to the ant's house and begged for something to eat. Daniel. Try as I might, I couldn't help comparing Daniel to my daughters. He said, have you any food that I might borrow? What were you doing all summer, cried the ant. Didn't you store any food away when the days were long and sunny? I they had been such a pleasure to hold close. Well, scoffed the ant, then sing and dance now, for it is best to prepare today for the needs of tomorrow. And the ant shut the door. While Daniel always seemed so far away. What did we learn from this story, Daniel? Uh, grasshoppers can sing? <laughs> All right, you may go. Come on, Bear, we can go outside now. Let's go play. The girls had played quietly in the house with their dolls. But Daniel preferred the outdoors and different company. Well, I forget the name of it, but it's this certain kind of fish that lives in the ocean. And it goes through a whole lot of trouble swimming up rivers and jumping up waterfalls, mm -hmm. just so its babies will be born safe. But then, it dies. And those baby fish are all alone when they're born. Oh, you know what I think you're talking about? I think you're talking about salmon. Yep, that's the kind of fish I like to catch. <laughs> well, I hate to tell you, but I don't think you're gonna find any salmon around here. They're a long ways away. How come you know so much about them? My pa told me. That's why this hat is so big. It was his. I figure the more things you know, the more your head's got to grow, to make room for it. <laughs> I think you're right. No, you remember all the good times you had with your pa. I can tell you that every single day I think about my pa. See that big enough that's what we're going to get. He used to joke with me because I like to fish so much. He said, Jedediah, 
He said when the good Lord made woman, he knew that he was going to have to invent something for man so that he could get away from her every once in a while, so he taught us how to fish. You see, what happens is that woman thinks that we're out here working real hard, bringing home meat for the supper table, right? And I can promise you, if she knew that we were having as good a time as we were having, she'd say, uh-uh, I'm finding something for us to do at the house, you know? More work. So we don't have to make it our secret, okay? Watch out, watch your cork. I was glad Jed gave the boy attention. But at times I felt he had grown to love Daniel more than he did me. playing with that. I need it. Would you let go, please? Daniel, let go. Now come help me with supper. Daniel, I'm waiting. Here, can you whip these eggs for me? You sure you know how? some explaining to do, Danny. It's not funny. <laughs> I know. I don't know how I got tucked into this. Martha, if you just let yourself relax, you'll have a grand time. Nate, I promised your mod have you wear this. Goodness gracious. <gasps> oh. <sighs> There's so many people. I never knew as many people even lived around here. Oh, Chad, look at the moon. What a beautiful night for a dance. Oh. Jed, it's been so long, I don't know if I remember everyone's names. Anybody else forgetting your name? The whole world's just been announced. Martha! Did you? Martha! Oh, it's lovely to see you. Danny! Danny! Nate! We 
you a good boy riding into town? Oh, of course you were. Why bother to ask? <laughs> now you two run along and have some fun. <sighs> oh, I don't know about you, but this beats sitting at home squatting mosquitoes. They've been really pesky lately. Doesn't seem to be much of them around here. We haven't had any trouble with them. Oh, you're lucky, pet. They're as thick as fog in the creek bottom. Oh, look! There's Widow Olsen! Oh, I wonder how she's managing to cope. From the look of things, I think she's doing right well. <laughs> yes. I don't know about you, but I don't think we need to let this good music go to waste. Heaver, I don't know if you'll excuse us. Let's dance, honey. Hold on. Jeff, what are you doing? Oh, Jeff, what are you doing? Stop, I'm not ready, Jeff! Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Where do you suppose our Nate has run off to? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. I don't think I've had the pleasure of making your acquaintance. I'm Eleanor Tanner, and this is my husband, Eva. And this little darling is our baby, Pauline. Oh, I'm sure you'd love to hold her for a bit. Come on, Eva. Go ahead, take our seats. Don't be shy. We won't be needing them for a tune or two. <laughs> oh, we haven't danced like this since our wedding. You're so light on your feet. <laughs> and it doesn't cost nothing? It's okay. Oh, it's okay. So when the sideshow get in town, huh? <laughs> it's not funny. It's okay. Well, it's funny to me. And it's funny to him. So what are you going to do about it, huh? So what, do you think you're big enough, huh? Huh, do you? You boys ever have so much fun in one night in all your lives? No, sir. <laughs> These certainly are the best of times, aren't they? <laughs> then why don't you boys go enjoy this dance someplace else? Daniel, I'd be honored if you'd have this dance with me. I'll find you after a while, Nate. You okay? This is how you lead a woman where you want to go. Now we'll take two steps to your left. Oops. Well, kind of side by side steps, littler step. And then we go the other direction, two steps. <laughs> Evening, Jed. Hi, Pastor Clay. How are you, sir? I really think that Martha and Danny are going to make a real good match. I think so. That certainly sets my mind at ease. I've had enough trouble lately. You know, some of the settlers have come down with yellow fever. No. It's a terrible illness. You've got the chills and fever all at the same time. Makes a grown man weaker than a newborn baby. That bad, huh? I found Ephraim Walters lying in his hog pen. Listen, do me a favor. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't say anything to Martha about no, this. No need. No need, as long as you know. Why do people like to dance? Well, it gives a girl a chance to get closer to a handsome man. Like you. You know, I was really proud of you, the way you stuck up for Nate. The next dance is ladies' choice. Girls, don't be shy. Go find yourselves a partner. Would you like to dance? May I have this dance? 
of myself happy with the boy and being a family again. But for every step I took forward, it seemed something would happen to push me back too. Jed, you go. I'll stay here with Nate and Daniel. No, Martha, you're gonna go. Eleanor needs help, and there's no telling what's happened. Danny, help Nate. No, my mom needs help. Okay, Nate. Is that pig necessary? Come on, jump in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. like a leaf. I don't know what to do. They're gonna die, Jed. No, they're not. They're gonna die, and there's nothing we can do to stop that from happening. I can hold them, and I can care for them, and they're just gonna die anyway. I'm gonna make a fire. Please, Aunt Martha. Yellow fever. Please, Aunt Martha. Don't let them die like my mom and pa did. Just let go of me. 
You just gotta save him! Don't let him die! Martha, you just gotta save him! Stop it! I'll do the best that I can. I just don't know that much about Dr. Yellow Fever. Eleanor? Eleanor? I've got some water for you. Here. Sip it slow. That's good. Oh, Martha. Thank the Lord. I'm here now. I'm gonna take care of you. Jed, fetch me a chicken. These folks need some nourishment. Nate, bring us some more water, quick. Oh, I'll get a chicken. Oh. She's fine. She just needs to eat. Now I can't just. Dana, can you make a cow? Yes, ma'am. I know how. Come on, Daisy. so far away in heaven, how can he hear us when we pray? We have a Oh, that makes sense. Do you think we should say a prayer so your mom and pa will get better? I did. So did I. That's her that way. That one? Yeah. You're a trusting man, you guys. Thank you. Can I take a turn? are still hanging on. Some fall early and some make it to the very end of the season. It just doesn't make sense. Why are you so sad? Well, and Heber are gonna be just fine because of your doctrine, you know. Oh, but I doctored Sarah and Lucy just the same. So why did Eleanor and Heber live and not my girls? Martha. So we, we have to get on with our lives. 
We gotta make a, a, a future for ourselves here. Come on, man. I have big plans for this family, big plans, and I need your help. We lost our family. We have everything in the world to look forward to, everything. We have nothing. Jed, I used to feel like someone was watching out for us, that, that nothing bad would ever happen to us because the good Lord loved us and was going to take care of us and watch over us. But it's just not true. Whatever happens, happens, and we're on our own. No, 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 Martha. Sweetie, I don't understand everything, but I know the Lord loves you. She's asleep. She's all tuckered out. What she did for Nate's folks was pretty hard on her, you know. You're right, Pa, about Aunt Martha. She does have a good heart. First, I thought she was just going to stand there. But she didn't. She did good. She did real good. She was hallowed. Scared about. They got plenty of food. They're just singing to each other. Come on now. It's getting cold, isn't it? Sorry won't fix this mirror. Came clear from France, you know.
Yes, you could help. You can try doing something constructive for a change. Why do you always feel like you have to be breaking something or tearing something up? Why can't you ever just sit quietly and try to learn how to read? Playing's fun. Reading's just... sitting there. Yes, ma'am. We gotta start being better, Bear. Or else I'll end up without a home again. And you'll end up in hog heaven. I'll just find that dumb old book to look at. Or she keep that stupid thing. Take care of you.
thought you could get in that trunk. I was looking for something to read. I thought I'd save you the trouble. In all their lives, my girls never caused me as much trouble as you do in one day. I didn't break nothing honest. I was just having fun. I'll put them back. No, don't touch them! Grabbed my babies in the shawl, and look how you've just flung it on the floor. You had no call to do this, Daniel. These are my things. If you ever get in this trunk again, I'll give you a whipping. Daniel, I want you to take her to the settlement tomorrow and give it back to Pastor Clay. Martha, Danny doesn't do things wrong on purpose. He's a high-spirited kid. He's got a great imagination. My boys are like that sometimes. I'll talk to him again. No, Jed, you already talked to him. It's not going to make any difference. I've tried all that I can try, Jed. I just don't have it in me. I don't feel any love for that boy, and I never will. Martha, what about me? What about me, Martha? Do you think that I don't miss the girls? Do you think that every day that I get up that I don't see the girls also? Do you think maybe that you could give, give it one minute and think about what this boy might mean to me? I wish things were different, Jed, but they're not. Fine, I'll take you back. Probably because it was all good. Shall I tell him? No, Martha, you don't tell him. I'll tell him. As you see best. She's been extra sad lately. I just hope she doesn't have a mind for making Baron to bacon where we're gone. What do you think? Oh, I think Bear's gonna be okay. He's not the one I'm worried about. Good. Hey, Asha, how'd you like living with uh, Pastor Clay before he brought you to us? Oh, he was nice enough. But he wasn't like a part of me. He wasn't like you. He wasn't like you at all. He didn't love me. Danny, I've been wanting to talk to you about some things, you know? You know, sometimes in life when, when things were, well, when you oh, thought they were. Thing. What's the matter? Oh, I thought I lost my tin there for a bit. Pa, mm -hmm. how much do you think a penny will buy? Depends on what you're buying, son. Well, I'm hoping it's enough for a looking glass and some writing paper. I'd sure hate to have to pick between the two, but if I had to pick, I'd pick the looking glass. For Aunt Martha, because I feel real bad about breaking her looking glass the day it rained, and the writing paper's for Nate, so he won't have to go writing on the insides of books no more. <laughs> So that's what you've been carrying around, that little bit of tin, huh? Where'd you get it? My pa gave it to me. He gave it to me for good luck. I had the best luck a feller could ever have. I got you for a pa. <laughs> I figure if I spend it, 
then Aunt Martha might have some good luck too. What was that you were telling me about? Well, son, I tell you, uh, I think you're just gonna have to hold on to that good luck penny for a little bit longer. It looks like old Jasper here's getting a limp, don't you think? I can't tell. Well, he's definitely getting a limp there. We're gonna have to get on back home here. We'll do this some other time, okay? Yeah, I guess. Get along home, Danny, Danny! Get along home, Danny boy. You seem pretty happy for a fella who just had a mule go lame. <laughs> Nothing wrong with this mule. Martha, if I tell you the mule is lame, the mule is lame, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Then you can take him back next month. I will not go into the settlement until after Christmas, and I can promise you that. Fine. But come January, that boy is going back. looked forward to Christmas, but that year, the thought of Christmas approaching brought me nothing but heartache. Martha! Martha! Ah. Well, guess what I found south of the Tanner's place? Bitty Christmas pine about so tall. It's nothing like we're used to seeing, but she'll do. I promise you that. Things may be different around here, but we can sure have ourselves a good Christmas. Jim, I don't want a tree. A tree is not going to make this like the Christmases we used to know. Nothing will. I don't want to celebrate Christmas this year. But Martha, we're going to have to do something. Nothing else for, for the boy. Mother children put a big store in Christmas. I know all about children and Christmas. Honey, that is over with. And Danny has the right to have a Christmas like he remembers. Oh, Jed, he'll never know the difference. He was five when his ma died, and I doubt his pa did much about Christmas. Mother, Jed, he couldn't even remember how to take a bath. How is he going to remember anything about Christmas? What's the... Jed, I don't want to celebrate Jesus' birthday this year. He's done nothing for us. My decision not to celebrate Christmas remained unchanged. Jed knew it, and as for Daniel, he mentioned it only once. 
Aunt Martha, can you sing? Sing a pretty song at Christmas. I wish I could remember it. Perhaps Daniel did recall snatches of past Christmases, but still, I was sure he didn't remember enough that it would make any difference to him. As for me, I remembered too much about Christmases past. All right, Pumper. There you go. All right, sweetie. All right, there you go. That's good. Take her on up the house. Be careful. Don't you spill it. Here, Bear. Just a little. <gasps> don't be a pig. No. That's enough. So just remember what I told you. Don't want it to be too, too fat or too thin, right? Chad, have you talked to Daniel yet? No, not yet, Martha. I haven't. Why? Because I don't want to tell the child something like that on Christmas Eve. Martha, I mean, we have we have so little to offer the guy in the, in the first place. I mean, we got no no Christmas tree. We got no gifts for him. We got no no spice cakes. I mean, can't we just let him, let him think that he has a, a place to live on Christmas Day? Where are you going? I'm going to the tanners to help him with some chores again. I'm sure they've fully recovered by now. I don't mind helping, Martha. Pa, wait. You better take this. It's pretty cold out. Perfect, doesn't it? Sure does. Pa, you're a handsome dog. I'll we'll see you tonight, okay? All right. Bye. Bye. Bieber? Chad, I found one. Oh, good, 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 good. How are you? Good, thank you. Oh, hi, Eleanor. Chad? Nate? Oh, wonderful. Thanks. Have a seat, Thanks. Oh, thank you. Look. Oh, what do you have here? That's the real reason why Eber risked going to the settlement. He wanted Nate to have that drawing paper for Christmas. 
But then he couldn't wait till tomorrow to give it to him. Sentimental fool. Nate hasn't stopped drawing for a second. Oh, pretty good. It looks like someone I know, but for the life of me, I can't figure out who. <laughs> Very How about good, a piece of good. pie, Jed? Fresh baked? No, 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 Elna. I gotta get back. Thanks very, very much, though. Um, I don't owe you any more on this, do I? Oh, no, thank good. you. Okay, it's so good to see you. Till then, I say Merry Christmas. I sure will, and Merry Christmas to you, too, okay? Bye, Nate. My regards to Martha. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you. Be safe. Yes. Well, I feel sorry for whoever it is. That's the gospel truth. Daniel spent most of Christmas Eve alone outside. He was playing with some sticks and strings. I didn't pay him much mind. new star in the sky and it was mighty big and there with all the cows and sheep and maybe a pig lay the baby Jesus his mama had him wrapped up good and warm in some scraps of cloth they weren't very nice but it was all they had it wasn't near as nice as this here shawl of Aunt Martha's he was a happy baby. He smiled a lot at all the strangers he had to meet. When he got older, he didn't do things to make his mama mad. No, sir. And his mama loved him. I felt as if I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Suddenly, this was no stranger's child. Another mother had loved this little boy and had taught him the story of the Christ child with such love that he hadn't forgotten it, young as he was. And I had failed that mother. I wish I could remember it. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. Holy 
so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep in heavenly peace That's the one that's the one my mama used to sing to me. Oh, Daniel. You mean you're not angry at me for taking the baby shawl and your little girl's doll? No, I'm not angry. It's a beautiful major scene that you've built here. Besides, it was really the baby Jesus who borrowed the shawl. And who could be mad at the Christ child? Well, I think that I have been, though. Because I felt like you didn't take very good care of my little girls and that he'd forgotten about me. Don't worry about that, Aunt Martha. I'm sure my mom has taken good care of you two little girls. <sighs> yes, I imagine they've been taken much better care of than I thought. And so have I, Danny. You've never called me Danny before. I didn't do a lot of things before. Why don't we go inside and get the cabin ready for Christmas? We may have to do things a bit differently, but we can still have it a little bit like the Christmases we used to know. Will you be sorry it's different? I mean, with a boy like me instead of your two little girls? No. No, I'm not sorry. After all, baby Jesus was a boy. Boy, kind of like you. Martha? Martha? Now, I know this isn't what you've been wanting to see about now, but... Jed, it's the most beautiful tree I've ever seen. <gasps> What's happened here? Did you forget? It's Christmas. Oh. This is for you, Danny. For me? Yes, it's all yours. I can keep it? <laughs> yep, yep. Merry Christmas. Can you give it to her now? Show your eyes. What are you two up to? Uh, and Fair tight. Hands. They're tight. Open. <sighs> what could you possibly have gotten me? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Chad, it's beautiful. This is Danny's idea. Merry Christmas, Danny. Merry Christmas, Mama. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Jed. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> Spring came that year on a snowy Christmas Eve. Another mother's child had again brought joy to my heart. And I was finally able to let my girls go. They were being taken care of, much better than I ever dreamed. And so was I. <laughs> 